Grabify is an IP logger and tracking link generator that was recently featured on MTV's Catfish as a way of determining whether or not someone was being honest about their location. Today, we'll explore the ways you can track and be tracked on the internet on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Lots of websites on the internet track you today, and Grabify is a tool that allows you to access the benefit of all these tracking technologies. This is useful for anyone from people looking to validate whether or not someone's a catfish to people looking to check up on their own security. And today, I'm excited to introduce Joel, who goes by JLinks, the creator of the tool, who's going to explain who it's for and what it's capable of. Thanks, Cody. So Grabify is one of my projects that I've been working on for a while. You can access it by going to my personal website, jlinks.net, or simply Googling Grabify. Perfect. So what exactly is Grabify for and who is it useful for? So Grabify can be used for many things. People out there use it simply for URL shortening, but it also has other purposes, such as people have often used it for catching catfish. So being able to tell whether a person is real or fake, um, you can tell that by looking at the logging, which we'll get into a bit later on. It can also be used for security analysts, developers, and just being able to see analytics on links that people have been clicking. So if I'm, for example, a person who's maybe getting messages from someone that's not being honest about who they really are, what are some ways that someone could possibly give themselves up uh, by clicking on a link like this? Well, that's quite easy. First off, you need to create a link. So let's create one for example.com. Now here you can actually enter any URL you want. So it could be a link to an image, a Facebook profile, a website, anything you want. After you've entered it in, simply click on create URL and I agree to the terms and conditions. Next you'll be greeted with your tracking page. This is where you'll see all your logs and all your results. So back to your original question. If we sent this to someone that we weren't too sure about and we had them click the link, we're going to use me as an example here. It simply redirects me to example.com, which was the link I originally entered, which you will see up the top here. Now, if we were to refresh the tracking page, we would see that we now have one result. If we were to click on this result, you can see that the person's location is Australia, based in Sydney, their browser, their operating system, the whole user agent, and their ISP along with some other information. From here we can derive whether they are real or fake based off the information they have been telling us. So that was really fast. Uh, and I also noticed that there were some Grabify links that returned a lot more information. Why is it that some Grabify links are virtually have no signs that you're being tracked and others might have a redirect page and return a little bit more data? This is because some of the links require a page to be rendered. So if we turn on smart logging, for example, and then we copy that link and go to it again, you notice a slight redirect page and then it translates it. And then it redirects us to again example.com. Now if we go back here and refresh the page, you will notice that we now have two links. If we click on the last link, you'll notice that there is a lot more information compared to that first link. Let's click on that first link again. And now let's click back on the second link. As you can see, there is lots more information. Smart Logger allows us to log a lot more than what a simple, than what a normal Grabify link would do. So as you can see, we've got the standard stuff, IP address, date, time, country. But now we've also got a few more things such as battery. So you can see what percentage the battery is at, charging, the orientation of the device, their time zone, their language, if they're using an incognito window or not, if they're using an ad blocker, screen size, their local IP, again, we've got browser, operating system, user agent, and all the other stuff, such as hostname, ISP, and any referring URLs. Now, before you had mentioned a couple things that were particularly difficult to hide, 
And if we were using browser extensions or something else to try to mask this information, you mentioned that things like the battery percentage and whether it was charging or not, uh, the orientation, or even some things that are more difficult to change or people might not think to change, like the language and the time zone, could give away someone who otherwise was doing a relatively good job of hiding who they are. Yes, that's correct. It's easy enough to chuck on a VPN to hide your address, but that only hides your IP address. There's many more things that can be logged, as you can see in front of us. Now, I have personally got on a VPN myself, so this is my VPN's IP, and I have set the country to be Australia. But you can also see that we have a time zone here. Now, this time zone, for recording purposes, I've also spoofed. I've spoofed this to be in Auckland, which if we Google Auckland, we can simply see that that is in New Zealand. So from here, we can assume that the user is using a VPN because their real time zone is still set to Auckland. Another way to figure out if they're using a VPN is based off the local IP. Now, usually a VPN would be 10 point something, something, something. That's a good way to tell. Usually, if they're not on a VPN, the IP will be 192.168 and then so on. So with this, uh, it kind of seems like not only can you identify uh, the device that was used to send the information, you can even identify perhaps like which network they were on at a given time. If it was something that had maybe unique uh, IPs, like a, a university or a coffee shop network that maybe wasn't the usual one. That's totally correct. You could do that. It's very common for universities to have different subnets for their local IPs in different areas. So just by someone clicking a link, you could potentially see that they were in the library or in the cafe based off the subnet of their local IP. So on the reverse side, how would we see how, for example, a browser extension or something else that's spoofing our user agent would be able to protect our privacy and hide us from tracking tools like this? So a lot of this information here is actually derived off of the user agent, such as the browser, the operating system, and a few other things. Now changing our user agent to spoof, let's say, an iPhone, will change this information to say that we are using iOS and we may be using Safari. Doing something like this can spoof Grabify into thinking you're a different device. So if we were dealing with someone who might be a little bit more tech savvy and find something like a Grabify link suspicious, are there ways that we might be able to still manage to get their information uh, as well? Yes, definitely. So there's a few different things we can do. If you don't like the idea of sending something that says Grabify.link, we can quite easily change this to something completely different. If you, there's a few different ways. Uh, first one is clicking on view other link shorteners. Now here we've got a different, a whole bunch of different link shorteners. So for instance, let's use a Google one. Now we've got this link here. We can simply copy it, paste it in. And again, we go to the same example page. And if we refresh this, we'll see that we will have three logs. Now there's another way. You can also change the domain and make the link custom. So for example, if we wanted to change it to be .png or, okay, now let's change this. Let's go, let's make it look like a form. So we can say show thread ID equals this, and then we won't have .jpg on the end. Um, let's go and change the domain to something like BMW form. Now we can simply copy this link paste it in, and as you see, this looks like a legitimate link to a BMW form. We go to it. The perfect link for any, uh, the perfect trap for any BMW enthusiast. Exactly. So they click on this, and then again, they're taking to example domain. Now remember, this link that we're taking them to can be anything you want. At the start, we just entered example.com. Now if we go back here, refresh the page, we'll see that now we've got four logs. And that's a few ways that you can use Grabify. Thanks to Joel's demonstration, you can see how the average user might use Grabify to identify a catfish or even see if their own devices are leaking too much information. 
Now, while there are some limitations for tracking tech-savvy users who might be using a VPN and a user agent spoofer, Grabify is in general a great tool for determining whether the person on the other end of an internet connection is being honest. If you have any other questions about Grabify, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.